here the uh, embassy of Chile as its cultural attaché, but to me he represents something different as well. He represents some uh, uh, absolutely welcome invasion of youth. Unfortunately, it's only temporary. However, given the pleasure, that I don't want to speak any more. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Is, that, is this necessary? Um, it is. Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So I am really bad with the computer, so I prepared some uh, pictures of the country, uh, which will make it easier for... Because the idea, if I talk about Chile, it will be very, very boring, but if you accompany it with some images, it might be a bit more interesting. Uh, the first thing is the name. Um, the name Chile. It's a very, very funny name for a country. I mean, it's, perhaps you think it's related to the chili peppers or because the country is rather cool, but it has nothing to do with that. Basically, the country was discovered by the Spaniards uh, and what they first went to Peru, which is well. north of Chile, and then they asked the Indians, what is uh, further south? And then the Indians, the Peruvian Indians said, well, further south is Chile, meaning for them where the world ends. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think it's a very poetic name, but also it's quite true, because if you see Chile in the map, it's at the bottom of the, of the planet. So it's the southernmost country in the world. And we've got the southernmost city in the planet called Punta Arenas. Now, as you can see, Chile is very narrow, but extremely, extremely long. If you, if you put the country in Europe, as some Chilean people would like, it will run all the way from Scandinavia to North Africa. So basically you have all the possibilities of weather that you will have from Scandinavia to South Africa, but to South Africa, to North Africa, but the other way around. So basically the north is very warm and um, desert, and the south is very cold, rainy, full of fjords, and, and but I will show you the pictures now. Um, we are going to start with the north. You can divide the northern part of the country, uh, towards the coast and towards the, 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 the mountains. We're going to start towards the mountains. That, that part of the country is called the Altiplano, which is basically the highlands. And it's very, it's very it's rather, nobody lives there, except for some Aymara Indians that uh, live also in Bolivia and parts of Peru. And you see that part of the country is uh, it's very high altitude. It's 2,000 or, or more meters over sea level. Uh, above the sea level, and uh, you have very little things there. Um, the animals, llamas and alpacas, and uh, those little animals. I, don't, I never know the difference between llamas, or llamas as you call them, oh, alpacas, and guanacos. For me, they all look the same. Yeah. So I don't know what those sort of things are, but they are the source of... Um, they allow the Indian people there to live comfortably, because those animals provide not only meat, but transport, also uh, um, coverage, uh, sort of a food, um, clothes, and they've been for centuries the, the most important um, way for them to, to, to survive. Uh, that's again the Altiplano. And uh, you can see it's a, it's a very, very big expanse of land. And now, if you go towards, there's also. Um, I, what do you call these sort of things? Uh, Geysers. 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 Yeah. So uh, it's a, it's a, it could be a very interesting uh, tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. If you go towards the middle of, I mean, you, we left the Altiplano and we go to the middle part of, the, of that area and it's a, it's a desert. I mean, very few, few things grow there, very few people live there, although there's little churches and little towns. Uh, uh, they live very, very uh, rudimentary. Uh, life is very tough, um, but it's a, it's a very interesting tourist attraction, for, particularly for Europeans. Uh, you can see uh, that's a place called Atacama, which is uh, the middle of the desert. Uh, one of the things about the Chilean desert uh, is it's the driest desert in the world. In some parts of, of that place, it's never ever rained, um, which is rather interesting. You have fun, very interesting formations. And there's a place called Valle de la Luna, Moon Valley. 
And some, in the past, uh, some, this, uh, what do you call them, uh, plot theories say that the, moon, the, the man never landed in the moon and the whole thing was filmed there. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see, it's, it's like, a, it's like an, another planet. It's a really, really uh, interesting place. But, completely bare. But, sometimes, there's a little bit of rain, but just a tiny little bit of rain. And that little bit of rain is enough to make the desert bloom. And that's a phenomenon that happens very, very every eight years, and it's called the Cierto Florido, so blooming desert. And uh, you have experts from all over the world coming to investigate the seeds and how they can survive for so many years, and then suddenly, with a bit of humidity, they just bloom. And it's a fantastic, fantastic uh, uh, place to, to, to visit. Um, occasion to visit that place. Then, the north for us is quite important for several reasons. One of them is archaeological remains. Uh, there was very interesting cultures in that part of the world, so even more ancient than the, the Egyptians. Actually, uh, perhaps not many of you know, but the oldest mummies in the world come from this part of the country. And when I say mummies, I mean um, sort of man-made mummies. Uh, the Egyptian mummies are 3,000 years old, approx. These are 5,000 to 7,000 years old. So much older than the Egyptians. So Tutankhamun, I mean, was a baby compared to some of these people you, you, you get here. And those are the mummies. They are called Chinchorro because they belong to a culture called Chinchorro. And they use a very interesting technique because basically it was similar to the Egyptians. They removed all the interiors and they replaced it by herbs and stuff like that. And, uh, but the difference is the Egyptians used to mummify uh, important people, pharaohs and uh, important priests. But uh, this culture, these people mummified everybody. Women, men, even children as you can see in that uh, bottom, bottom picture. Bottom picture. Um, so it was a really, really interesting culture and very few people are aware that um, well, you, you have these fantastic specimens there to, to see. Another very interesting thing about the desert in Chile is never rains, there's no clouds. So basically it's a, the perfect place for, for uh, see the stars. Uh, it's so, the, 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 the sky is so clear that you can basically touch the stars. And that's why the main observatories in the world are now based in Chile. Um, ESO, which is ESO, which is the European Observatories, uh, yeah, they are all based in, in, in the country. And actually, I think some people could visit the observatories and, and, and experience the whole, uh, as they call it, um, tourist astronomy. Um, I want, let me go back a little bit. Uh, if you go towards the coast, you have very old... The thing about the other thing, important thing about uh, the north is uh, the minerals. The, the principal, the, the wealth in Chile comes from copper now, and in the past it used to come from nitrate. We were the main producer of nitrate in the world. We were a very rich country at that time until the First World War, when the German discovered some syn synthetic, they produced a synthetic nitrate, and the whole industry collapsed. And then in the north you can find some some ghost towns some mining towns that have been abandoned. And I think I put the photograph there because I think it's, it's, it's rather interesting. It's, it's like going to, traveling to the past and you can discover the, the, the richness of that place. For instance, there was a very famous singer called Caruso. And Caruso never went to the capital, Santiago, but he went to one of those now gold tow uh, ghost towns to, to sing. Because they were really, really impo um, important at that time. Well, and towards the coast, uh, you have uh, cities in the middle of the desert. They're not the prettiest cities in the world, uh, but uh, you have nice coast uh, and the industry is, is developing. Now, if you go further down the country, the weather becomes more benign, uh, the desert disappears, and the weather becomes like in Spain, it's more Mediterranean. So we are going south and we reach the capital, which is Santiago. I, I come from Santiago, 90% of the population comes from the, from the central region. Uh, the, the reason is the weather is absolutely fabulous. It's like going to Spain, um, warm in the summer, cold in the winter, but the winter is rather, rather 
rather short. And it's a very modern city, uh, as you can see in, in the pictures. Uh, you see, we have a fantastic uh, underground system. And, well, it's, it's, it's a, I don't want to talk about cities because I think cities are boring and I want to um, sort of stress more the, the, the landscape because I think it's one of our main, main, main things. But let me say, uh, now that we are in Santiago, Santiago is the, the capital, the government is there. Chile has a, a democratic government. Uh, we had elections last week. Uh, there's a lady president. We're going to have a lady president again called Michelle Bachelet, who is a center left. Um, and the, one of the nice things about Santiago, the capital, is you are one hour away from ski centers. And you're also one hour away from the coast. So in, the, in spring, you can go skiing if you want, or you can go swimming if, if you like. Although when I say swimming, the, the Chilean coastal part of the country uh, is nice. We have nice beaches, uh, sand. But the problem is that if you can see the people, very few people are, are, are bathing because the water is extremely cold. We have a, we have a um, cold current called Humboldt that makes the, the water not very nice for swimming, but very good for fish and for seafood. So basically, Chile is quite well renowned for, for, the, for the seafood. Um, that's a coastal city. And in the coast, we also have a city called Valparaíso. Perhaps some of you have heard of it. It is in the, until the opening of the Cana pa Panama Canal, it was the most important port in the Pacific. And it was a very British city. There was a lot of British people that went there in the 19th century. And actually, I, I don't know, but I think the architecture has something of, 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 of British, but it's been adapted to the hills, because that's a city built in the hills. Uh, basically, main big percentage of the population are British descendants and German descendants. And another interesting thing, that I, thing I love is the funiculars, because there are something like 30 hills. The city is sort of built in 30 hills. And every hill to access the top, you have these funiculars. That the other day, I went to a place called Hastings, and I discovered that uh, they, are this, they have one, and it's the same company that made some of them. Uh, so I, I thought that was a really interesting. And that's by, by, by Paraiso again. Um, and then if you go further south, we get to the central part of the country, which is uh, the region of agriculture and the region of wine. Uh, it's the wine district, as we call it. Um, it is very nice, you can go and explore the different vineries? Vineyards. Vineyards. I now have to talk about Chilean wine because I think it's a very interesting thing. You tend to call Chilean, Chilean wine like a new world wine, <coughs> which I think is fair enough, but actually it's quite unfair because most of our um, grapes, particularly the red wine grapes, came from Bordeaux, from France in the 19th century. And we imported them, and we produced them in, in, in Chile. And then all those grapes died out in France, because there was an epidemic, the Sicofia. <coughs> so basically, all the grapes were wiped out. So basically, France had to re-import all the grapes from us. <laughs> and actually, the, the oldest <coughs> vineyards, or, 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 or wine trees, if you call them like that, uh, come from Chile. Uh, so the, so Actually, French wine should be the new world wine. Um, no, sir. Well, as you see the vineyards. Um, so it's a, oh, and then the other thing. Then we are going to leave the country for a little while and we're going to go to the sea. And Chile uh, has also the Easter Island. I, perhaps you, you know about Easter Island. It's a, it's, a, it's a little island in the middle of the Pacific. Uh, the world in is in the word means uh, the word of the island in the original language is Tepito Terua, which means the navel of the world. And basically, the, the island is in the in the middle of the Pacific, so the middle. Of, uh, you know the statues and the whole mystery of how the statues uh, were, were produced and why and all those sort of things. It's a very interesting place to visit, and it's uh, it's the only Polynesian part of Chile. Then we have another island called. And this is quite interesting. This island is called Robinson Crusoe. Uh, uh, because um, in the 17-something, 
there was a sailor called Alexander Selkik from Scotland who was uh, left there in that island for two years or more. And that, um, his life there inspired the, 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 the book by Robinson Crusoe. Um, and that's why it's called uh, uh, Robinson Crusoe Island. And if you go there, there's a little cave where allegedly Robinson Crusoe lived and all those things. Uh, but for me, the most important thing about Robinson Crusoe are two. 90% of the vegetation and the, and the animals are native from there. So you can't find them anywhere else. And the other thing is the, is the um, langostas, what do you call them? Um, lobsters. lobsters, which are the biggest one in the world and the most tasty one in the world. That You, you, you can't get them in Chile. Basically, they, cut, they catch them there and they take them straight away to the best restaurants in London and Paris. So next time you have a lobster in a very posh restaurant, I'm sure it's going to be from, from Juan Fernandez. Now, we're going back to the country, to, 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 uh, and we are traveling south. And in the south of, south of the country is like England. I mean, the scenery is very similar to, to what you get in the Lake District. Um, lots of lakes, lots of rivers, but there's a big difference there. Can you see the difference between a landscape from Britain and that landscape? What is it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. In the country we have something like 3,000 volcanoes and 80 of them are still active. <laughs> Which doesn't sound very assuring, but uh, uh, um, sometimes they erupt and they become a really, really interesting feature. <laughs> but, but I have to say, most of them are, are harmless because, because they are towards the Andes and they don't affect uh, populated, populated areas. But the presence makes this scenery quite nice. The, um, the south of the country as well is the, is the place where the, the, the Chilean Indians live. Uh, the, I think something like 3% of the population are native Indians, called the Mapuche, the people from the, from the land. And that's a typical Mapuche girl, with the, with the, and they used to work with silver. So, and then further south, we get to the Lake District. Again, volcanoes are more lakes. And if you see the architecture in that area, it seems rather European. It seems like you are, you are in a black forest in Germany. And it is because uh, that part of the country has been populated by the Germans since from the 19th century. The, the thing is, the area was quite empty, uh, and the Chilean government decided in the 19th century, well, we have to bring people there in order to keep that land, because otherwise we might lose it to the neighbors. So they decided to bring people from Europe, and they thought, well, let's bring Irish people. They're always willing to travel. But then we thought, hmm. But the <laughs> <laughs> because one of the requirements was uh, they have to be Catholics. They wanted Catholic people. So the Irish were a possibility, but um, we thought about it, and then we decided uh, uh, that we wanted Catholic Germans. So the first immigration in the country were Catholic Germans, and the other thing is we didn't want working class people, we wanted professionals. So basically the first wave of immigration was Catholic German professionals, architects, engineers, doctors, <coughs> and they all come to that part of the, uh, of the, of the world. They build their own houses and their, their communities. And then the immigration continued, and then toward the, towards the coastal area, we just gave up with the Catholics, and when they said, yeah, all right, all Germans can come here. So you have a lot of Lutheran Germans coming to the coastal part, and I still, till now, the two communities sort of uh, don't get on very well. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a funny thing, because the best beer in the country comes from there. Uh, Kuchen, which is our staple for cakes, come from there, and um, they are very much integrated to the Chilean culture. So I, I am part of that too, in a way. Um, it's, it's a fantastic country, uh, the south, you have lots of rivers, so fishing is one of the, one of the sports that people practice. And uh, we have famous, we have lots of churches made of wood, um, and they've been declared <coughs> World Heritage by UNESCO for their interest. Uh, different kind of architecture. Those churches come from the 1500s uh, until the Victorian times. And they, you have different shapes, different um, quality and size. But, but the, the, the one thing is all of them have been made by, with the same 
wood, which is called alerze, the type of conifer that only grows there and is very, very, very hard. Um, then you go for the south, uh, you don't have many cities, many uh, just vegetation, and it's a virgin land. I mean, there's parts of that country that's never been, never been explored by people. Um, if you go further south, then you have forests, something like 40% uh, of, 35 to 40% of that area is covered by, by a forest, by native forest, as you can see there. And then you get to Patagonia. And Patagonia is a funny thing because we, sh we share Patagonia with Argentina. Although I have to say the, the interesting part of Patagonia is the Chilean part. The Argentina was quite boring. Ah. Uh, uh, well, I, and I'm saying that honestly because uh, in the Chilean one you have all these little mountains and lakes. The Argentina one is quite barren. Although you have a huge Welsh community in the uh, Argentina and Patagonia. If, if that's of interest. Mm -hmm. um, then Patagonia again. And then if you go further south, you reach. Um, Magillian Strait, um, you have uh, icebergs of all kinds, lovely uh, animals, as well, dolphins and, and whales, and you get to the Antarctica. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, Antarctica belongs to Chile. Well, part of it. And it's funny because we have the same claim as Britain on the same part of Antarctica. Um, actually, the Argentinians have the same claim as well in the same part of Antarctica. It moves a little bit, but we all think that that part of Antarctica is ours. And we decided to colonize it, so we have a, a little town there to, to sort of make that, show that our claim is taken seriously. So you have people living there in Antarctica, little families that live there for, live there for a long, long time. I don't think like there is that interesting, but... Uh, it's Chile in Chile. Exactly, exactly, you said so. Um, and that, 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 that's it. Um, yeah, I just wanted to go very quickly up and down the country. And if you have any questions, please feel free. How, how wide is Chile this widest part? Well, the, the widest part is 3,300 miles. And we are sort of almost 3,000 miles long. What's the population? 17 million. Well, we're a small little country. I mean, it's a, it's a very long country, as you can, as you can see. But most of the population are, are concentrated in the middle. Um, but 17 million, which is a very, very big number. I've heard of copper and phosphates. What else do you have on the tree? Well, copper is our main industry. Actually, um, Two-thirds of the copper that you have in the world comes from Chile. We are the main producer in the world, and now that the prices are, are up, um, and it's been very, very good for our economy. But we also, we also have tried to diversify our exports, because mining is unreliable. As you, uh, we, we had the experience with the nitrate. We had a fantastic industry. We were very rich, but we lost lots of uh, money. When, so the same, the same thing could happen to copper. So we are diversifying, and we do lots of fresh fruit. Actually, if you go to the supermarkets, you will find a lot of Chilean mm -hmm. uh, fresh fruit, apples, pears, grapes, um, you name them. Um, wine. Wine is a very important industry now. I, I think the United Kingdom is a main export, import, import importer of our Chilean wine. Uh, and, and forestry. As you could see, the country is, 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 a, is, a, is a very, is, we have lots of forest. So forestry is a, is a very important market for us, together with um, fishery. Due to the length of your country, mm -hmm. obviously the northern part are strange to the southern part. Populations, I mean. Yeah. They hardly know each other. <coughs> <coughs> well, that, that's a very good question. Because, uh, we, it's a very funny thing, because if, if, here in England, if you live in Essex, uh, or, or if you live in... Um, North London, you have different accents. Yes, yeah. In the country, in Chile, the accent is the same. It's not different. I wouldn't recognize a person from the north from the accent, or from the south from the accent. I could rec recognize some social things, but you don't recognize the region of the country where they come from, which is a very strange thing, considering that the northern part is quite isolated. I mean, we are separated by, by a desert, and the southern part, 
we are separated by, by lots of little fjords and islands. Uh, nevertheless, we have sort of, we are sort of homogeneous. People from Europe are often anxious about visiting South America as a tourist. How would you assess Chile in this respect? Yeah, that's a very, very interesting because I always um, argue with people, and that's one of my favorite topics, because uh, British people, or Europeans in general, they say South America as one big country. And the thing is, we are completely different. I mean, Chileans, we Brazilians, we don't have anything in, well, very little income. It's like you and French people. I mean, they are, uh, we, we are different, and the countries are different. And despite the fact that Latin America seems like a very, or parts of Latin America seem like a very uh, dangerous continent, Chile is, is one of the safest countries in Latin America and perhaps in the world. Uh, for instance, corruption. Corruption, you turn to think about Latin America as a corrupt area. Chile is the less corrupt country in Latin America and one of the less corrupt countries in the world. We are number 17 in the, in the there's a, there's a ranking published. And, and I think we're number 17. And Britain in corruption is number 15. So basically, uh, and we are ahead of Italy and, and Spain. So we are technically less corrupt than most of those countries. So our level of corruption is is compared to any country in Europe. So basically, I would say Chile is a very safe country to, to visit. Of course, I mean, <coughs> like, well, it happens everywhere. Yeah. It happens in London. Yeah. Exactly. But, exactly. but it, I think it's, it's, it's extremely, extremely safe. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and we are rather boring people as well. That's the other thing. Uh, <laughs> when you tend to think about Latin America, you tend to think about very flamboyant, happy, dancing, old singing people. And uh, we Chileans are, are, are not like that. We tend to be more. Um, Sober, more boring, more grey. Uh, we used to be called the, the, the British of South America. <laughs> uh, I would take it as a compliment. <laughs> Again, I was talking about the length of the country. What is the transport system from north to south like? Uh, well, you, we used to have a fantastic uh, railway system. But like many railway systems, um, got a bit obsolete and uh, they didn't have much maintenance. So basically, there's a very good coach system. Oh. Basically, like, very much like in, in, in America. Yeah. They have a very, very, very good coach system. So that's the main. Ah, and, the, and the roads are fantastic. So you can travel, travel by car, no problem. I mean, the roads are fabulous. Language, question, mainly Spanish? Spanish. Spanish, Spanish are, yeah. Spanish. We've, we've heard before of troubles between Uruguay and Chile. Are there any current troubles between the two? No, no, no. We, we, actually, we, we don't have a border with Uruguay. Uh, we've had problems with some of our neighbors. We, we limit with, in the north with Peru and Bolivia, uh, with Argentina to the west. East. We east. Um, so Argentina, Bolivia, and um, Peru are our neighbors. Uh, we had had some problems with Peru in terms of uh, maritime border. And Bolivia uh, is also always claimed um, they, they want to have access to the sea because allegedly they lost the sea uh, to Chile in a war we had in the in Victorian times and they lost the access to the coast so basically they are permanently claiming that access we Chileans we provide access <coughs> to the sea to them we build a, a railway for them to go to the sea we don't charge them any 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 fees to go to the sea but we don't want to give them the sea the sovereignty of, 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 the, of that land, we, but we give them complete access. Uh, but, but they still claim... That's on the north. That's on the north. In the north. Uh, no, the south, we have some uh, small limit, uh, in, in small border problems with Argentina, but all of them have been... I mean, it's, it's a very, I mean we're talking about uh, 3,000 miles of border with Argentina, or a little bit less. <coughs> So this is bound to be little problems in, 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 in different regions. But we are, we are friendly enough. I mean, we have a good, good relationship with them. A bit better than the Malvinas, then. Eh? A bit better than the Falklands. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well uh, actually, Chile uh, now uh, supports um, Argentina in, in, uh, mm. Mm. in that dispute. <laughs> You haven't mentioned possibly your most famous export at the moment, who plays for Liverpool? Oh, <laughs> Suarez? 
Oh yeah, you're right. That's right. How do you rate Chile's chances in the World Cup? Oh, none. What's up? <laughs> no, about, 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 is we got pride. About it, well, well, we beat England uh, in a in a friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm sure we're not going to do that, but it's quite a very cricket. <laughs> we are playing cricket as well nowadays. So it's weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, the World Cup is, 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 is to me it's always a shame because we all we qualify, but we always last. So sometimes I prefer not to qualify, but I'll ask you, please don't be good. <laughs> <laughs> you might be lucky next year. Yeah, I, I, I hope so, I hope so, because it's funny, Chilean people, they love football. Since you are two, they give you a ball to play football. And all, I mean, it's the national sport, but we are very bad compared to the Brazilians, the Argentinians. I mean, there's no chance of us winning um, Argentinians or Brazilians. But, um, Nor us. <laughs> <laughs> Any more, any more questions? Can I ask Michael to have a thanks for visiting Well, thanks for coming along today, Chris. You've given us a fantastic insight into yeah, your country. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it yeah. must be probably the only country in the world that is so extreme from one end <laughs> to the other. And it, we had someone here, was it from Brazil earlier in the year? And yes. You can't believe the two countries that are so close together are so different. I mean, so thanks for coming along. Really sure. interesting talk you've given. Mm -hmm. I will ask the members to show their appreciation. Oh, yeah. As an extra special treat for Good. you, we like people of honesty and integrity to draw the raffle. Oh, because you're the most honest. <laughs> 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 because if anybody picks it, they'll pick their own. <laughs> Anybody wants to change the meal, please phone Jeff and let him know. <laughs> okay? You're yeah. moving. Right. Changing There'll be a new woman when you come back. Yeah, there will be. I'll have a new meal. There'll be a like new woman. <laughs> the website has been mentioned early, but can I remind the fellows of that? And there's also a club council meeting immediately after this meeting. So, fellows, could we have the final toast? Rotary and Peace. Well, Rather well. Have a safe journey and can I wish you all a very happy Christmas and a prosperous 2014. Thank you, fellows. Thank you.